everyone. Welcome back to our series on Superbase Edge Functions. Now, in the first quick start video, we looked at how we can create new functions and deploy them. Uh, and in this video, we want to dive a little bit uh, deeper into how we can test functions locally and invoke them with the JavaScript client library. So here we actually have uh, within the Superbase, Superbase main repository in the examples folder, we have uh, a folder called edge functions. I'm going to link this below as well. Uh, and there we have uh, a collection of functions that we can use as a starting point. So right now we have um, two functions in here. I, uh, one is browser with course. So if you want to call your function, uh, from the browser, you will need to have some specific uh, course headers in there. And you can um, see that here. So uh, the functions actually have uh, a shared folder as well. So this is how you can organize your code. Uh, you have all your functions in separate folders. And then you have um, a folder with an underscore where you can have shared uh, clients. So for example, we have um, the super base client in here. And then also we have some uh, course headers. So for course to work, so for us to be able to call our function from our own website uh, on the Superbase domain, we need the access control allow origin. We can set that to either our domain or uh, in this case, we can use the wildcard. And then we'll need to um, allow a couple of headers, specifically the authorization header, the X client info, which is what um, Superbase JS sends to identify itself, uh, as well as the API key header. And so what we can do is we can um, clone down the, the Superbase uh, repository here. Uh, and then you go into examples and um, edge functions. And then we have in here our workspace configuration because we actually have a test client as well. So this is just a create react app. And then we have our super base functions. And because functions are written in Dino, um, we kind of want some separate workspaces here. So you can see we have our test client, uh, which is in the app folder, and then our super base functions, which is in super base slash functions. So now let's actually go ahead and open up uh, with VS code, we can open up our um, edge functions dot code workspace. So that's what we want to do. And then you can see here we have um, a, two different works, uh, three different workspaces. Actually, we have our project root, which just has our um, workspace file in there, our readme, um, some super base CLI migrations that we can use. Uh, and then we have our test client, which is our, um, our uh, create react app to call our functions. So you can actually look in here. Uh, in the app.js, this is where all the magic happens. So we have actually this uh, invoke function method here. Maybe make, make that a little bit bigger. Um, and so this is what we call. So this is using the Superbase um, JS, Superbase uh, client library. We can then call Superbase functions invoke the name of our function. And then we can pass in some body. Important is we need to stringify our uh, JSON when we send that to our function. And then in our function, so here we have our uh, super base functions. We have our shared code, like our uh, course headers, our super base um, client. And uh, it looks like VS Code has not uh, recognized the workspace. So sometimes this can happen. Uh, and then in that case, just close and open it again. Um, so what we want to do is for it to recognize it as Dino. And so now it seemed to pick up the, the settings uh, correctly from VS Code. Um, and so we can see here, we got our create client imported via Dino. We got all our stuff, um, Dino here. And so our um, end variables, our super base URL and our super base anon key are automatically um, set both in the um, local testing environment as well as the uh, deployed environment. So you will have your project specific um, env uh, environment variables already set. So you can simply use them there. And then let's look at our function. So if we actually want to call our function from a browser environment, uh, we need this specific code here. 
So first of all, we need our course headers. Uh, we have seen them in uh, the other file here already. So these headers we need to um, reply with in a response. So we need to check what the browser does with a post request is so actually it sends an options request first to check um, if everything is uh, set up correctly. And then here the browser um, no, so our function needs to reply to the browser with our course headers in order for then the post request to be sent by the browser. And then what we can do is the stringify JSON that we um, send in our app. So let's maybe look at our uh, app.js again here. So the JSON stringify request JSON that will be sent to our function here. And so we can then use the um, request.json to get our JSON back and we can get out the name from it. And then uh, again, we just spread the course headers into the headers of our response, uh, which is saying also additionally application JSON here and we're applying that. And then also what you want to do is you want to wrap this into a try catch um, because if there's any error, for example, with, you know, um, with destructuring the JSON or things like that, uh, then we actually, um, and uh, deserializing the JSON here, then if the function throws an error and we want to make sure that we, uh, even in the error case, re reply with the course headers because otherwise in the client in the browser, it will look like it was just a course header, uh, like a course error but we don't see the actual error. And so ideally we want to prevent that. Okay, now let's actually go ahead and um, so in our app workspace, let's actually run our app here. So as long as we're in the app subfolder, we can say npm uh, install first, if you haven't um, done that. So first time you want to do that and then you say npm start. And so now we're going to start up our um, development server. And you can see here, we have our little Superbase Edge Functions test client. Um, and so what you can see here is, uh, there is a little switch of all the functions that we have. So we have the browser with course, select from tables. Now important, this will only work uh, when you call deployed functions. So what you can do is you can specify um, and .n file. And when the .n file is specified with your live project um, credentials, then uh, it will actually make a call to your deployed functions. But when you're running this locally, it will just call out to localhost and to whatever function is currently being served with the CLI. And so that's exactly now the next step that we need to do. We actually need to serve up our function. And so we can do this with Superbase serve uh, and then we just say our uh, function name, which is browser with course. So we do that. Um, of course, we do need Superbase functions, serve functions, serve, that's the actual command. Uh, and again, here, when we're testing with the CLI, we need to make sure that Superbase start is um, running. So we first say Superbase start to make sure our Docker images are all up and running. So we're now starting up the whole um, uh, Superbase stack locally, including the database. We also have like a studio URL and everything. So that's, that's really, really neat. And now we can say Superbase function serve browser with course. And so we're starting up our function and we can see now our function browser with course is up and running. So now if we go over here and we specify um, our body as name uh, world and we invoke our function, we can see a message, hello world. So that's exactly our function invocation. Uh, that's great. Now what we can do is we can look at um, our other function as well. So let's maybe have a look at um, this one here, which is a, a pretty neat one. Um, so we can select um, from our table. So in our functions, we can use the Superbase client as well. And what we can also do is we can set the uh, auth context for our Superbase client. So whoever called this function, 
um, we just get the authorization header. So the auth context is forwarded when someone is locked in with uh, Superbase auth. And then we can, on our Superbase client in our function, we can uh, set the auth to be the same. And then when we do Superbase client dot from, it does the uh, exactly right thing. And so uh, this is called select from table with uh, auth RLS. So let's maybe uh, actually copy that so I don't have to type it out. And so now we say superbase functions serve, and then we say select from table with auth RLS. And so now you can see uh, we're up and running, our function is up and running. And so now if we invoke our function, we see here data is just an empty array. Uh, and this is because we're not locked in, so we can't see any user data. Now, what we can do is we can create a new user. Uh, we can say just testing. And since we're running locally here, so this user in, in the beginning will not uh, exist. So we have to sign up a new user. So what you can see here is actually we have um, an initial migration uh, where we actually set up locally a users table as well as a trigger. So anytime a new user signs up, we just populate a new row in our users table. And so when we sign up a new user, um, let's sign them up. We can now see we're locked in uh, as this tester here. And when we now invoke the function again, you can see now we get the data back uh, that is exactly our user data. So this is the uh, UID for our user. And so you can see RLS is working as intended. If we sign out and invoke the function again, you can see now uh, we don't get our user data back anymore. Okay, so this is exactly uh, how, how it works, how we can test our uh, functions locally. If you remember, if we now want to uh, deploy our function, and then also we can see here, we have some console logs in our uh, function here, which is console logging out the data and the error. Uh, and you can see here, that's being logged out to the console where we are serving our function locally. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead and in um, a Superbase project, I have a functions example project here. Let's go to our settings API. From here, we can um, copy things like our URL and our Anon key. And what we will need is our project ID in order to um, uh, in order to deploy the function there. So we'll say Superbase. Let's not scream in our database. We say Superbase functions deploy. We want the browser with course. And then we can spe specify if we haven't linked our project in the CLI, we can specify a project reference, which is our project reference. And now we're bundling up our function and we've got our function deployed. And we can actually head over to the dashboard and look at our function here. Okay, and so now we can use the same client to um, actually invoke that function. But in order to do that, we need to specify um, our environment variable. So we need our React app Superbase URL and our Anon key. So what we can do is we can just copy um, this file into uh, .env and I already have this here. So I'm just gonna comment this out so that the functions are available. Um, uh, sorry, the environment variables are available. And then we um, probably have to restart our um, test client. And so now the test client will send the request uh, actually to our um, to our actual function. So maybe we can also open up the console, look at the network requests. And so now when we invoke the function, we're loading and we're actually going, you can see this now, uh, here we're actually going to our functions.superbase uh, project and we're getting our payload back, uh, our payload, we're sending name world. So that's this here and then we're getting hello world. Now my name is Thor. So maybe let's invoke the function with that. And now we're getting back hello Thor. Great. And so now that the function is deployed, we can actually invoke it with, you know, our um, JavaScript client or um, 
with kind of any client library that uh, currently supports it. So we can actually look in here in the Superbase client. So we have the official JavaScript TypeScript client um, has functions JS, and then as well as the Dart Flutter library has the functions Dart. So here we have the invoke methods already uh, available. So what we can actually do is maybe we go to a little uh, REPL it, and we can do all this with uh, pure uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Maybe let's look at that one. I'll link you this one as well. And so um, we have CDNs available to import Superbase uh, as well. So if you have like a pure, pure HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript project, you can do that here. And then let's have a little look at our script. So we just set our Superbase URL, our Superbase anon key. And then we can invoke our function. We need to await. Um, okay, maybe this is a bit uh, messy. Uh, and so let's actually call maybe this function. So let's um, do this from scratch. So we can uh, invoke our function with, we have our Superbase client. So we say Superbase client dot functions dot invoke and then we pass in the uh, name of our uh, method which was browser with course and then we can pass in a couple of options in our case we just want to pass in uh, the body and remember the body needs to be stringified so let's stringify our json and we're just going to say name is Thor. And so now if we uh, run this, we can see here uh, as our window loads, our function is executed and we can see hello Thor and no error. Okay, so this is how uh, easily you can test your functions locally, deploy them and then actually call them from a browser environment. Remember, you will need to set the course headers for things to work in the browser. Um, and that's it. Let us know in the comments below what other videos you want to see and see you next time. Bye-bye.